I want everybody to just kind of stay in that place right now. Um, for those of you who've never been to a house meeting, welcome. I don't necessarily plan a message. Um, I just show up and just let the Lord begin to move. And I really felt like when I was standing over here earlier, probably because I was standing near this section over here, um, I felt like the Lord spoke the word, um, a Joshua generation um, to me. And so I've just kind of been seeking the Lord, like, what does that mean? And I felt as though, sorry, I got swimming with the spirit just for a minute. Um, I felt as though, um, you know, there, there's, we've heard that, that phrase before. People have prophesied, like, the Lord's raising up a Joshua generation. Um, and I'm not really, like, looked into it or researched or anything. So I don't have to do that. I just kind of asked the Lord, like, what does that mean? And I really felt like the Lord said that the, this Joshua generation is going to capitalize on the troubles of the generation that went before them. And that they will take land that this generation didn't have the courage to take. Um, and that lines up. But then if you read in, um, in the end of Deuteronomy where Moses passes away, it says this. Because then I'm asking, I'm just kind of, I like to kind of teach people, like, how does this word kind of demystify, like, the prophetic and all that. So I'm just kind of telling you the thought process of how the Lord revealed this to me. So then I, I, I went to the end of when, when Joshua kind of took into that place and said, Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid hands, his hands on him. And, and I really felt like, I just felt like on, a, on faith, the Lord is saying, we're going to start with an invitation to anybody in the room who is under the age of 25 and you feel like this word resonated with you. If you would stand and come forward so that I can lay hands on you on faith. Now, nobody may come forward. I'm pretty sure I know who's going to come forward. But this is where you get to receive the word and you get to mix it with faith. You get to mix it with action and you get to activate the things that are spoken. So to be honest with you, you could come forward and be like, I'm 27, but I feel like that word is for me. And you could come forward and on faith, God would activate that word, right? And so, uh, so we can already see the Lord working. And so sometimes people, if you guys feel like the Lord is saying it, it, to you, like, this is a word for me. I feel like I have creative spirit, creative ideas that God's going to give me authority to take places and spaces that the generation before us didn't take. If you feel like that's you, if you want it to be you, come on, this is, this is the authority that God gives to us. Then you get to say that. I've never met you before, have I? No. Okay. Just nice and easy. So everybody lean your stretch out your hands if you believe the Lord is working in her right now. Right? So we just release that Joshua anointing in her right now in Jesus' name. We release fear out of you. We release fear out of you. All guilt and shame. Guilt and shame. The Bible says this, there is there now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The enemy would tell you that you've messed up and you're not usable for the kingdom. But God is here tonight to tell you that for you tonight, he has showed up. And he's saying tonight is your night. That tonight is your night. That God has a plan for you, has a purpose for you, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and give you a future. So I erase the word of the enemy that would say that you're not good enough. That would say that you are condemned. Take a giant step forward for me. Take a giant step forward for me. Come on, take a giant step forward for me. Come on. We're just going to step into that. We're going to step into that freedom. I want you to say, I receive your freedom, God. I receive your freedom, God. There you go. She's got you. I promise you she's got you. All the way. I receive your freedom, God. I want you to say this. I lose myself. I lose myself. From there it is. There it is. Oh, you'll watch. She's about to speak in a spiritual language. We're just going to loose it all the way. We're going to loose it all the way. We're loosen it all the way. I promise you guys, I've never met this woman in four my entire life. I know nothing about her. There it is. We loose it. We loose it. We loose the praise. We loose the worship. We loose the freedom. We loose the freedom. Uh, I want you to say this, God, I will go. God, I will go. I will go. God, I will go. Wherever you send me. Wherever you send me. Wherever you send me. Wherever you send me. 
Mm -hmm. than me. Yeah, I have no fear. I have no fear. Because I know that you are with me. I, I know that you are with me. He just loose his love. We lose his love. We lose his love from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. We lose his love. Just receive his love and let him love you. Just receive his love. That's it. Receive his love. I want you to say this. I am loved. I am loved. I am loved. Anybody disagree with that theology? God loves her? Okay. We're all in agreement in the room. You are loved. I am loved. I am loved. I am loved. Come on, you don't have to go to theology school to know that God loves his people. Yeah, I am loved. I am loved. I'm loved. I'm loved. I'm loved. I'm loved. Yeah, that's, that's just the spirit coming on you, sister. She's just receiving the fullness of the spirit. How many of you know that in John chapter 20, it says that Jesus breathed into the disciples and gave them the wind of life. But in Acts chapter 2, he breathed upon them and gave them the wind of power. Come on. One is one. The other is another. So we lose that wind of power in you right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. We release name. the wind of power. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus. In the, in the devil. I, yes. I, yes. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name go. of Jesus. I watch you how the spirit will take children. over. You can't help my family. Oh. <laughs> I watch how the spirit is taking over now. Now the Holy Spirit's ministering to her. We stand in agreement for your victory. We stand in agreement that the enemy cannot have you, cannot have your children. We stand in agreement. You are free. Say, I am free. 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 There you go. Now say, I am loved. I am loved. My children are loved. My children are loved. My marriage is restored. We're gonna win. God always wins. 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 Did you say that for me? God always wins. God always wins. God is winning. God's winning. That's right. God is winning. God's winning. God is winning. God's winning. Now, are you ready for that, Joshua and Lincoln? Are you sure? Okay. Step forward with me. She's all right. Are you okay? Okay, see, she's fine. Remember, some people are only like, she okay? I'm like, she good. She's better than all of us in this room probably right now. <laughs> all right, here we go. Everybody else is like, I ain't going forward now. <laughs> Hi, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> I just relax when I see that. Here we go. We just release that Joshua anointing on you right now in Jesus' name. There it is. There we go. There we go. Anybody else want the Joshua anointing? <laughs> Anybody else want the Joshua anointing? This is your chance. I know there are several people over here that God is putting it on you. <laughs> it's just a spirit honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Leap over there. You can keep playing as much as you want. I'll let you know if I want you to stop. Hi, sister. All right. On faith, you have come forward and you heard the word and you feel this word was personalized to you. You feel that God has put it into you that you would raise up and you would discover and take spaces and places that the generation before you was unable to take. And you believe that God has given you that power and he's given you that authority. All right. How many of us agree for that? Agree for that? Go ahead and lift up your hands. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Go ahead and close your eyes. I'm barely going to touch her. We're just going to let the Holy Spirit just release that on faith. As she's just activating, as she's stepping forward, we're allowing the Spirit to just begin to move from the inside out. From the inside out. We just release that Joshua anointing right now. There it is. There it is. Just keep receiving it. Now you'll notice I'm barely touching her. Just keep receiving that. Just keep receiving that. 
We break fear off of what man will say about it. Come on. We break that off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Bold as a lion. Bold as a lion, gentle as a dove. Bold as a lion, gentle as a dove. See, some people get into places and spaces because they kind of muscle their way through and they bulldoze their way through. Other people allure into spaces and places because they're gentle as a dove. And the Lord's really flipping you into a space of understanding the tenderness of the kingdom and the power of the tenderness of the kingdom. That there's power in gentleness. There's power in even silence. We know that Joshua had to be silent. And that was the act of warfare was the silence. And the world would tell us, man would tell us, that we need to be loud and we need to be audacious. But sometimes God says it's the gentleness and the tenderness of his kingdom that shatters yokes, that ushers us into places and spaces. It was the worship anointing of David that ushered him into the presence of the king. It was the gentleness of how he cared for the lamb that taught him to slay Goliath. And so, Father, I thank you for my sister. I thank you, Father, for her faith in coming forward. We just release that right now in the name of Jesus. Meet Brittany, the person you really should be praying for. Anybody else for the Joshua anointing? Come on, why not? <laughs> okay. Oh, look at her. That's good. That's good, right? Let me get twice the, the anointing in here. I do know April, so I like to tell people when I do know somebody. I don't know her a whole lot. I've ministered to her a couple times. I think I did meet you here. I met you at a different house meeting, but she's come to some house meetings. She's a little bit of a spirit junkie. We love spirit junkies. And so I love somebody that's like, look, I'm twice the age. I want twice the anointing. God is outside space and outside of time. So age is something he created while we're in this lifetime. But spiritually, we can say I'm 20. I'm 20, I'm 19, I'm 18, whatever it is. And so, Father, I thank you for the faith of my sister. I thank you, Father, for the new season that you've brought her into. I thank you, Father, for the courage and the strength that you've put into her feet. And, Father, I thank you for the word that you've placed upon her tongue, but the wisdom that you've given to her in knowing how to swing that sword. And so, Father, I thank you also for that tenderness and that compassion and that gentleness that you're filling her with. I thank you, Lord, for the audacity that you give us to say, I want that anointing as well. It's never too late in the kingdom. And so, Father, I thank you that today you're starting a new thing. As many things that you've done in my friend, as many things as you've done through her, as many things as you've done um, because of her, but God, I thank you that today you're doing even yet a new thing. And so, Father, we thank you for that double portion just from the top of her head all the way down to the tips of her toes. Just from the top of her head all the way down to the tips of her toes. I call forth that Joshua anointing. That even the generations before you, the things that they were unable to do, the spaces that they were unable to conquer, the failures, the difficulties, the challenges, the trials and the tribulations, I release. I release freedom in you. I release solutions. I release creativity in you to take those spaces and those places that they did not have. And I speak this over you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Now, you'll notice some people fall out. Some people don't. Sometimes April has. Sometimes she doesn't. Sometimes God calls us to stand. If I gave her a nice hard shove right now, she might fall out, but that's not my style. The Holy Spirit will take down who he wants to take down, and he'll keep standing who he wants to keep standing. So it's important that you only do what the Spirit is telling you to do. You give room for the Spirit. You don't force things to happen. Do you remember when they uh, put the Ark of the Covenant on a cart and they tried to drive it? They tried to navigate the move of God, and Uzzah tried to reach out. It was unstable, and it caused death to Uzzah. Right? So that's a picture of us allowing the Lord to usher himself into spaces and places the way he wants to. And so you can kind of see she's in her own space, in her own place right now. The Holy Spirit's working on her. Don't touch it. When the Spirit's working, don't touch it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Anybody else for the Joshua anointing? Anybody have any questions? I like to teach and train and, like, demystify the Spirit so people aren't like, what's happening in here? And I'll be honest with you, a lot of times I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. Because you can't always explain the supernatural, right? Because it's supernatural. If I could explain it, it wouldn't be supernatural. I don't want to explain it. I do want to see evidence of it in the Bible. 
I want to see evidence of it in the Bible. That's why I gave you the scripture that talked about Moses. He was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. And so we learn from that the value and the importance of laying hands on one another. Is that making sense to you guys? Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to open up the floor for ministry. April, you can stay where you're at. I'm going to take my hand off you, baby, but somebody behind you. I do want to read this passage to you. Um, and it's just a passage that the Lord led me to today that I just um, got kind of stuck on. And it's all about just peace and just looking at what is the Lord calling for peace. And I was really just entrenched in the space of understanding the Lord's peace. And then my mom called and was like, I just got in a car accident. So then I got to apply what I had just learned, right? And really go, okay, what does this mean for me now when all of a sudden everything just flips and turns and turns crazy or something chaotic enters into your day? Because that's really when it matters when we have an understanding of who God is to us. It's easy to say, in my closet, in my sweet little office with my sweet little golden, golden retriever, that God is peace as I'm just petting him, right? But it's another thing to go about your day and to have all the things happen in your life and say, but is God my peace right now? What does it mean that God is peace to me right now? What does it mean that not knowing if my mom's okay, how her car is going to be, what are we going to do, blah, 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 all the things, right? But yet there's a peace that surpasses all the understand, all my understanding. So I was reading today, and it says, Therefore, in Romans 5, 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace. Somebody say, I have peace. I have peace. I have peace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? That's verse 1. Now, if I look at that, that word peace in the Greek, how many of you know the New Testament, the original language is in the Greek? The Old Testament, the original language was in the Hebrew. So sometimes if you look it up in the original language, you can get, gain understanding. In the Greek, that Greek word is irene. Okay? And so what that word actually means, it's not just a quietness or a stillness, but it also implies the idea of safety and prosperity. Okay, so now I'm shifting the meaning of peace right now. When God says, because of my faith, I have a peace. I've entered into peace. Everybody say, I have peace. I have peace. It's not just saying there's a quietness or stillness, but there's a safety and a security that I find. And that safety and that security causes me to prosper. It causes me to thrive. When I say prosper, I'm not talking about buying a big jet. I'm not saying it doesn't mean that, but I'm saying it's not what it means. What I'm saying is it means I have life. I'm living. When something's prospering, that means it's growing. If a fruit tree is outside and it's prospering, it means it's growing. If it's not prospering, God would call it dead. Okay. And so when he says, I have a peace, he's not just saying I have this quietness or this stillness. He's saying there's a safety and a security that's in me that causes me to prosper. And so it implies the idea of growth. It implies the idea of safety and security. And the problem is we have it backwards. The problem is we try to find safety to find peace. We often say, when I'm prospering, then I'll have peace. I think with me in Philippians 4, 7, where it says, there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. And what it's saying, and the problem is, is a lot of times we want understanding to have peace. But he's saying there's a peace that surpasses your understanding. So what we're saying is God's peace trumps understanding. His peace trumps prosperity. His peace is what brings about understanding. His peace is what brings about prosperity. His peace is what brings about safety. His peace is what brings about stillness. But we've got it backwards. We often look at it the wrong way. In the Old Testament, it says this. In Isaiah 32, 17, it says, The work of righteousness, and that righteousness is in a capital R, which means the work of Jesus. And if I read that word work in the Hebrew, it's the idea of the business or the enterprise of Jesus. I love it. It says enterprise. Any entrepreneurs in the room? Yeah. I, I love entrepreneurs. I love business. And so when it says like the business of righteousness, the enterprise of righteousness will be peace. The work of Jesus, the business of Jesus will be peace. And it says, and the effect of Jesus, the effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. How many of you feel like you need some quietness and assurance in your life right now? Forever. Not just today, but forever. But the Bible says it was done. Yeah. So somewhere we got outside 
of the work, the business of the cross, the enterprise of the cross, the work of the cross has been accomplished. And with it, the effect of it is a quietness and an assurance of peace, of safety, of security, of the idea of prospering, growing, thriving, feeling like I'm alive. That's what peace implies here goes on and it says in verse 18, my people will dwell in peaceful habitation. Anybody got a pause on that? And be like, well, I don't feel like my, I don't feel like my space, my, my space is very peaceful. Right? I mean, come on, we can be in a really quiet room but still have a lot of noise. But the opposite is true too. What this is saying is, is we can be in a really, really noisy life with really noisy circumstances but still have a quiet habitation, still have a peaceful habitation. And I don't know about you guys, but I need that. I need that. I need that in my life. And we need that in our country because we're not in a very quiet space. We're in in a very noisy season in our country. But God says there's a work that I've done that trumps the work of the government. Come on, don't make me get political but it trumps the work of your boss, trumps the work of your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your children, your dogs, your finances, whatever it is. There's a business that God has put into play. You're loving this word. I know you are loving this word, my little apostle. The work, the business, the enterprise of righteousness will be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. My people... Come on, somebody say, I'm his people. I'm his people. people. I am his people. Come on, this is where I'm going to stop and be like, God, you say I am your people. Come on, I'm just going to demonstrate for you. You say I'm your people and that I dwell in a peaceful habitation. And God, I'm just going to be honest with you. I haven't felt that. And so I repent, God, of allowing my mind to trump your quietness. I repent, God, of allowing my emotions to be noisier than your peace. God, I submit myself. I subject myself. I step. I inject myself into the fullness of your peace and of your kingdom. I'm not making up something to pray. I'm just praying scripture with the authority that I've been given. My people will dwell in a peaceful habitation. It goes on. It says this. Insecure. There's that safety. Insecure dwellings. Come on, some of us don't feel very safe in our own skin. Come on, if you've ever, none of y'all have gone through menopause. If you've ever gone through menopause, sometimes we don't feel very safe in our own skin. Y'all are the Joshua generation, but someday you're going to laugh at that joke. In secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. goes on, it says, though hail comes down on the forest. So he's saying, look, I'm not going to change your circumstance. Though there's still storm, though there's still crappy economy, though that gas is still $4 a gallon, it doesn't matter. Though these things are still happening, you will be found in a secure dwelling. You will be found in a peaceful habitation. You will be found about the business of the kingdom. There will be a peace that trumps all the things of this world. And it says the work of that peace is done. It's done. It's done. So in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places, though hail comes down from the forest and the city brought low in humiliation, blessed are you who sow beside all the waters. When he's talking about the waters, he's talking about, but I'm going to keep sowing my seed in the water of the kingdom. I'm going to keep sowing my seed in the living water. I'm going to keep planting myself by the river of God. I'm going to keep sowing my seed in the word of God. I'm going to keep sowing my seed into righteousness. I'm going to keep so blessed are you. That word blessed in the Hebrew, it denotes the idea of being set up for success. So when he says you are blessed, he's saying, I haven't set you up to fail, baby. Come on, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and to give you a future. He has not set you up to fail. When he says you are blessed, he says you are set up for success. In Isaiah 5, it says he planted for himself a vineyard. He put it on a hillside. He took all the roots. He took all the weeds. He removed all of it. He put it on a hillside where the sun would shine upon it. And he placed a wine press right in the middle of it. You want to know why? Because he was setting it up for fruit. Because he set it up for success. 
And so that, that idea, anytime we see that word blessed in the Old Testament, it's the idea that you are set up for success. And God set us up to live a life of peace. The work has been done. And some of us are trying to do the work for God. I need to get up earlier. I need to get a planner. And then I won't be so stressed out. Come on, am I only speaking to myself? Right? But there are so... Dana's like, oh, get out of my way. But there are some things that God has done for us, but we're still trying to do the work of the cross. But the work of peace has been done. And so tonight, I just, um, I don't know, maybe that message was only for me. I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Um, but if you don't take it, I'll have all of it because I need peace. And the minute I say that, God's like, done. Baby, it was done. It was done on the cross. So you don't have to try and strive for it, try to work for it, figure it out. All you got to do is just step into it. Just step into it. So I know some of you are like, what does that look like? What does that look like? It just looks like stepping into it. It looks like when the crazy's going on around you, you're like, excuse me for a moment while I step into a pocket of peace. Oh, here it is. You can't touch me. I tell people a lot of times the kingdom is like the Batmobile, and he's like, dum, 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 dum. You guys probably don't know Batman. <laughs> I got to come up with some new metaphors. Okay, so there's this old show called Batman, and he drove a regular car. But when he was going out to fight the villain, the car would put this shield. It would go, ding, 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 ding. It was like a scale. It would like, ding, 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 ding. And then bullets would like, Okay, do you guys get get the metaphor? Do you get the metaphor? Okay. So when we talk, when we step into that pocket of peace, right? It's like it's like Batmobiling on the devil. I see you. I, I feel you kind of bouncing off me, but you can't seem to penetrate me because I'm shielded with the blood of Jesus. I've been soaked. I've been saturated. You know, in the Old Testament, those shields that they had, they, they went from their toes to the top, those big, heavy, clunky, and they were wooden. And what they would do is they would soak them in water and they would oil them up so that when a fiery dart would hit it, it would be quenched because the moisture of the wood would put the fire out. And that's what we need. We need to be quenched. We need to be soaked. We need to be saturated in the, the oil of the kingdom and the water of the word so when the enemy shoots his fiery darts at us, it's just extinguished immediately. So tonight I'm going to open up the floor for ministry. This can be as fun and exciting as you want it to be. If none of y'all come forward, all of my staff will come forward because they'll take what you don't get because they are luscious. They are greedy in the spirit. I'll tell you that right now. And I don't blame them one bit. Um, I'll do some teaching and training. Um, I do produce a lot of these on YouTube, which is why there's a camera. Your back is to the camera. Um, if I say your name or you say my name, I promise I will cut all of that out. So you'll see like blips sometimes as, as I'm cutting out personal things. Um, so I don't want that to inhibit anybody in the room like, oh my God, I'm going to be fame, TikTok famous. But you might be TikTok famous. <laughs> um, look at they're like, mm. All right, the floor is open. I'm going to let you guys kind of play for a little bit. They'll go in and out. I'll go in and out. Sometimes I like to as I'm ministering to somebody, I'll talk to the crowd and tell you what I'm doing, what I'm sensing, why I'm saying what I'm saying. Sometimes I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing right now, which is a lot of the time. We don't have to know what we're doing. We just need to trust God and know that he knows what he's doing. And sometimes the more I don't know what I'm doing, the more God is doing. And I'm like, this is so much fun. I'm watching with all of you guys. So you want to come up? <laughs> have I met you before? <laughs> yeah. Huh. Good last year. Were you at this house meeting? No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Awesome, awesome. Years ago, really? Phyllis was there, and um, oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get her back to my uh, next conference. Are you? Mm-hmm. To be one of the prophetic teams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hands out like like this. Now, I obviously kind of know her, but I don't know what's your name. Jennifer. Jennifer. Okay, awesome. Take one more step forward for me. Mm. So even as you step forward, I kind of saw off on this side um, just a real flash glimpse of a clock. Um, I really felt like the Lord uh, wants me to tell you that you have not run out of time. Now, the things he once spoke to you are still true for you today, um, that God hasn't changed his mind. I'm reminded of the word that says that God is not like a man. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't relent. He doesn't turn from it. And somehow along the way, you've gotten deterred. You got cut off course. 
Um, but the Lord is saying, but I haven't changed my plan about you. I haven't changed the thing I, the thing I spoke about you. And so the dream, the thing that God once showed to you, I feel like he's going to reignite it even tonight, even as we're standing here. There we go. And so, Father, we agree with you that you don't change your mind. That it's not really about our worth, God. It's about your blood and what you did on the cross. And if you were waiting for us to be worthy on our own accord, God, we would never be ready. And so we thank you, Father, for grace on the cross. And we thank you, Lord, that you want to do this thing tonight. Tonight. God, I give her courage to rethink, to redream, to rewrite it down. Rewrite it down. There it is. Just keep receiving it. Just keep receiving it. Just keep receiving it. And you'll notice I'm barely touching her. I'm actually not touching her at all. This is the spirits coming up.